Hey guys, how's it going? Chez back again with episode number 10 of the Atletico Madrid career mode series here on Xbox One. And we've got a big game in the first one. We've got Real Betis at home today in the opening game of the episode. Now, Real Betis last season in real life finished in the European spots in uh, in La Liga. The Europa League European spots, I should say. More so than uh, than, uh, than the Champions League. But they're second in the league in uh, in our career mode so far. Now, in real life, they're, uh, they're really struggling so far this year in, uh, in La Liga. They sit bottom of the table. But in FIFA, they're still very, very strong indeed. So we're going to be a tough test. It's second versus third as we head into this one. Real Betis sat just above us. And they're going to get the first opportunity here. It's going to come back off the bar. Unfortunately, Courtois is able to get up there before Xavi Torres is able to get across to him and uh, put the goal under any more threat. But uh, Betis were just on top of me all the time in the opening few stages. Just chance after chance after chance. Chuli here draws another great save out of Thibaut Courtois. Just enough to turn it around the corner. And they'll be disappointed that they haven't been able to take the lead there. But uh, we push in towards the half hour. Actually breaking down the right-hand side with Wanfrey. And it's our turn to get on the offensive. Now breaking out of those uh, that defensive pattern we'd been in in the opening stages. And cost the twists and turns before finding Thiago. But unfortunately it's a bit of a tame effort. Just trickles past that far post. And uh, really doesn't do the uh, the goalkeeper any harm whatsoever. But we're just passing the ball around here. We actually play a loose pass. And uh, Tuli's going to pick the ball up. He's just going to run at me. Break it past the, uh, the first defender. I can't catch him with a second and he hops over the challenge and fortunately the the defender was able to do just enough not close enough to be able to get to the ball but enough to put him off so much so that uh, he isn't able to uh, to get the shot into the back of the net and we are fortunate again that uh, the, the follow-up doesn't trickle into the back of the net after Courtois made that initial good save but our luck ran out as we headed into the second half just five minutes in and Verdu powers them into the lead and a deserved lead we uh, we really weren't on our game so far in this one we had to step it up as we pushed into uh, the latter stages of the game. Thiago twisting and turning on the edge of the box. David Villa find the Diego Costa. The first shot is blocked, but it falls back to him. Has another one. Draws a good save out of the goalkeeper. Another effort from David Villa there. And again, the goalkeeper's on hand to make another good save. But we're, we're growing in stature in this game. We're having more and more chances. Becoming more of a threat going forward. And Aflo finds David Villa here. And it's a great strike across into that far bottom corner in the 72nd minute to bring us back on level terms. Now, Real Betis has had chance after chance after chance chance and weren't taking them which is what we were doing in the early stages of the season as a whole but uh, we we're able to uh, to be more clinical in this game as we pushed forward and Diego Costa just a couple of minutes after we got that first goal pulls that one across into the same bottom corner that David Villa earlier scored in and we actually pushed 2-1 in front and you can see how much it meant to the players and the fans both going absolutely mental there in there in the background but the lead didn't last for long. Ten minutes later, they're uh, fortunately going to get themselves back into the game at 2-2. The first save, the first shot, rather, the cross was well saved by Courtois, but I couldn't close the ball down quick enough with the defender. And it just had an open goal to slot into to make it 2-2. But literally a couple of minutes after that, David Villa slots a great ball through to Afalai. And that is a beautiful dinked finish into the back of the net. And that the goals seem to be coming in quick succession in the second half, just, you know, five or six minutes after each other. Just a massive, massive... Uh, you know, burst of goals in the last 20 minutes of the game or so. And uh, we still weren't done as we head into stoppage time. Gnosis breaking down the right-hand side here. Plays in Verdu, squares it back to Ruben Castro. Unfortunately, unfortunately, Courtois dives over the top of the ball, trying to get back across to it in the 92nd minute. So as you can see, it really kicked off from the 70 minute, 70th minute onwards. And uh, what was looking like it was going to be a boring 0-0 draw at half-time. Turned out to be a really, really entertaining 3-3 draw. But we come into the second game really wanting to improve, but having to rotate a lot of the players because, of course, we are having some uh, some fixture congestion issues at the minute. We've got Granada away. Now, it's not an easy tie, but it's not necessarily the hardest ties at the same time. They're not in the top half of the table. And as you can see, the top five teams are all on 20 points. It could not be tighter at the top of La Liga right now. And we're pushing, or they're pushing rather. I get, got quite confused there because, of course, their home kit is very, very similar to, uh, to ours. The red and white stripes and the blue shorts, etc. But there's a horizontal, ours a vertical. But they were the team that were going to take the 1-0 lead in the early stages. A really nice finish, actually. Twisting and turning between a couple of defenders before tidily sneaking it into that bottom corner in off the post. Aaron Zubia just stood there motionless, just watched it go into the back of the net. But he wasn't motionless there, making a very, very good save. A reaction save from that header to make sure that Granada didn't extend their lead. But they're still threatening. And the ball's going to come across this time after their guy absolutely throws himself trying to get on the end of the cross. They aren't able to 
to uh, to get a second goal and we are able to uh, to break free. And we push into stoppage time at the end of the first half. Diego breaks free. Lovely lofted effort. But unfortunately, too much on it. The goalkeeper maybe put him off by a rushing out at him. And unfortunately, we aren't able to get ourselves back in the game. But Koke is going to draw a great save out of the goalkeeper yet again this time. Still in stoppage time at the end of the first half. Not really too sure how many, added, how many minutes were added on or how far we were into stoppage time here. But Koke is going to see the man on the edge of the box. And you guys know I love a cheeky set piece like this. Insua gets a great first touch and it's a gorgeous finish across into the top right hand corner. Now Felipe Luis has already scored a couple of bangers for us this season. Insua did that earlier on in the year in pre-season. And he scored another one there. It's really, really nice. It's confident. It gives me confidence to uh, to have the uh, the ability to score goals from you know all over the pitch. Our left back's popping up there to uh, to contribute on the uh, the goal scoring front. As you can see, the 50th minute. It was 45 plus five, literally right at the end of the first half. Perhaps a little bit longer than the referee should have played on, but we'll take it. We're back in the game, and Aaron Zubia again makes another fantastic reaction save to keep Granada out, and the second effort just goes past that near post not really too much to worry about there but we push further forward into uh, into the second half not quite as action packed as the first but uh, going very very close there uh, Granada with that second effort just kind of snatched across it a lot of power behind it but not really as much accuracy as uh, as he may have liked but if you take notice in the top left hand corner El Arabi has just come onto the pitch literally as we were just before we were taking that goal kick and he dives straight through the back of Koke there and uh, that was the guy that literally just come onto the to, onto the pits, and he's got himself sent off. He's been on the he's been on the field of play sixty seconds, and he's just I don't even know what has gone through his head there. It's just a horrible tackle. You'll see from the replay. It's two footed. It's straight through the back of Koke. There's just no control there whatsoever, and it's a horrible challenge. I mean, I know you want to uh, you want to kind of impose yourself on the on the opposition straight away as soon as coming onto the pitch, but. There are definitely better ways to do it than that. And fortunately for us, the 10 men were so, so very unlucky. They're hitting the post and uh, unfortunately weren't able to get themselves back in the game. But we're trying to catch them on the counter-attack here. Diego's just going to uh, keep hassling the defender. Tackles him once, tackles him twice, falls to Adrian. Back to Diego, lovely lofted ball. Adrian's in, rifles it, and the goalkeeper gets it straight in the face. And we aren't able to win the game. But we score right at the death in the first half. Can we do it again in the second? As you can see, 90 plus 5. Diego turns inside the defender. All he's got to do is put this in the back of the net, and he smashes it. Wide off that right hand post. I had my head in my hands. I could not believe that he had missed that chance. A real, real opportunity to snatch all three points there. And unfortunately, we don't take it. And the third game of the episode is a very, very tough one as well. We had a tough opening game against Betis, which we drew. We really should have beaten Granada, although with a rotation side, you can understand why we drew it. But Athletic Bilbao are one of the stronger sides in the division. Of course, been uh, very, very good in Europe in the past couple of seasons, as well as in La Liga. They sit second now, and it's second versus fourth this time as uh, we try and get ourselves closer to the top of the table. Now, Bilbao are a very, very offensive threat. They are a, a very, very homegrown kind of team. They, uh, I think it's kind of their, their board policy that they only buy, pay, only buy players from the Basque region of, uh, of Spain. But the player that scores their goal is, in fact, a player that we gave to them. Now, if you remember at the beginning of the season, the transfer window, we bought in Markel Susayeta from Athletic Bilbao with a money plus uh, Raul Garcia deal, and it was Raul Garcia who was on hand, to give them a 1-0 lead opening in the five, or in the opening five minutes rather. But Susayati himself was involved in this move here, picking the ball up on the edge of the box, twisting, turning, finding Gila Voga. Not really too sure how that's found its way into the back of the net, but I'll take it nonetheless. 15 minutes in, we're back on level terms and looking to improve our position in the game, get ourselves in front if we possibly can. Afalai is going to pick up the ball here, finds David Villa, he's got a runner off him, it's Diego Costa, holds his run well to stay on side. But unfortunately, the goalkeeper makes a very, very good save down to his right-hand side and pushes the ball out for a corner. But Diego's going to whip it in. Up goes Miranda and Diego Godin. And again, the goalkeeper makes another very, very good save to keep us out. So we stay at 1-1 for the time being. But just a few minutes after that earlier opportunity, we're going to get the chance again. A lovely run off the ball on both sides. Had real a lot of options there. Could go left, could go right. Went right straight to Diego Costa, who smashes a ball into the back of the net. A really, really emphatic finish there from Diego Costa. And he's been scoring quite a few goals for me this year. He's doing a lot better for me at Atletico 
Real Madrid than he was doing when uh, we had him at Chelsea in the earlier career mode on FIFA 14. That is a really, really good finish. Very, very pleased with him there. Great strength to, sh to sh uh, shove off the defender and then just absolutely rifles it into the top corner. You can't get better than that from that sort of target man striker. And Thiago is going to pick the ball up on the edge of the box here. Shows great feet to get away from one. Finds Afolai trying to find the back of the net. Can't do so. Great save. Somehow Guy Lavoga smashes a ball off the inside of the post on the follow-up and we aren't able to extend our lead. But the ball is still in play. They hoof it clear and it actually turns into a great attacking opportunity for them. Juan Fran shows good uh, good pace there to get away from me by Gomez, but I'm lack or I'm lackadaisical in, in possession. It's a loose pass, falls to Benya. He's got a great strike, so much power behind it, but fortunately it was on his weaker left foot and not his stronger right, and he smashes it past the post rather than inside of it to bring them back on level terms. We're still in the first half now. There's still a lot of chances going on in this game. Afolai this time breaking inside, finds Diego Costa, who's going to twist and turn, get tackled. Thiago shows great feet to get away, a good shot, and again the goalkeeper's on hand to make another good save. So this game really could have any scoreline you could possibly imagine after that very very entertaining first half but it's ourselves that take the lead in at the break 2-1 up after bouncing back from that early setback and Felipe Luis literally just two minutes into the second half ourselves near Marco Susieta is constantly making those sort of runs in behind the defensive line in every single game we play it's a really nice trademark to have a really good trait for, uh, for him I know where he's going to be at all times when we're breaking on the counter-attack like that and he comes very, very close to scoring against his former club there. But we make a change late on in the second half, changing both central midfielders. Thiago and Gila Voga go off for Diego and Koke, just trying to freshen things up in the middle, make sure we can keep churning things over, going from defence to attack, and then make sure that we've got the stamina in the midfield to keep Bilbao out, because I don't want to lose points here. So a side that are above us in the league, and if we're ahead late on, I want to keep that lead. And uh, we get a wonderful opportunity here. I thought we'd got a penalty at first uh, first glance. And I thought Iraola was going to get sent off. So horrible tackle. He quite clearly is the last man. And in my opinion, the referee has got that wrong. That should be a straight red card. And you can't really tell from this angle. I just, I'm just i not sure whether the contact was on the line. Or whether it was just minimally outside the box. The referee gave it. It's just minimally outside the box. I wanted a penalty so bad. However, we're going to square it to David Villa. And it's a great strike to round the game. Off. We're going to take the game 3-1 against the eventual 10 men of Athletic Bilbao. And uh, the penalty doesn't really matter because we scored the set piece anyway. So we take three points from this one. And it's a big three points because you'll be able to tell as we head into uh, the final screen here. We are now top of La Liga. Of course, Barcelona, as you can see, do have a game in hand. And if they win that game in hand, their goal difference will be greater than ours. And they'll go top. But for now, we sit top of La Liga. So absolutely delighted to round this second week of the career mode out being top of the league. So that's going to bring today's episode to a close, guys. Thank you very much for watching. There was, of course, a My Player episode last night if you missed that feel free to check the channel page if you missed yesterday's uh, video from this series then there's an annotation on the screen over that play button there to take you to that if you want to subscribe to the channel then feel free to do so there's an annotation on the screen on the right hand side and a link in the description so you don't miss out on any of the career mode content coming to you on Chesnoy Gaming and uh, Chesnoy Gaming is the Twitter handle as well for me over in the Twitter sphere at Chesnoy Gamers feel free to follow me over there as well but that's it that is it for today guys thank you very much for watching I'll see you tomorrow afternoon on Saturday with some more My Player and uh, we'll crack on with that. So thank you very much for watching guys and I will see you next time.